All right, first things first, I'm gonna finish this tiny little app that I was working on called Click Trials. I just have like two or so more little tests I wanna add to it and fix up the UI. It's kind of like Human Benchmark, if you've ever seen that site. Um, this geometric prediction is the only one that's not programmed properly yet. So I'm going to be fixing up that one. And then I think we're going to do text prediction. See, that's the other thing. This was designed just to be like a thing that I can add little mini games to slowly over time. Because each of these are just like their own little JavaScript file. So for example, memory test. Just has you put in and remember a sequence. It's like, if you get it, it's an insanely simple app that's not supposed to be like, it's not supposed to look good or be the best. It's just supposed to simply measure your stats and give you like a trial of how well you're doing on stuff like memory. See, I got, I got one wrong there. I wasn't paying attention. Why six, 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 six? <laughs> Why six, 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 why? Messed that up. E S S nine K K K S S S nine K K K S. Yeah, so you get it. It's a random sequence, and uh, it basically measures how many you get correct when you guess the sequence back. And if you don't get any right, um, it, uh, it fails. Okay, so, it's hard to get none right, is the thing. Especially once you get to these bigger sequences. Okay, anyways. When you finish, it shows you stats here. I'll show you the aiming one. So it measures your aiming by you have to click inside the white circles and they move faster and faster and appear faster and faster. If you don't click inside the white circles, it measures the percentage is the distance from clicking in the circle. And yeah, it's supposed to get really fast at the end, because it's supposed to be particularly hard. It can give you like an upper, upper level. And then there's like, Classic reaction timing, click when the screen blinks. I honestly have pretty bad reaction time, it seems like. Or around, I guess, human average 200 milliseconds. I also wonder, though, how much display lag there is. But yeah. Super little app I started working on a bit ago, and uh, yeah, I just kind of want to finish it up or at least get it to a point where it has enough of these little tests that I feel like releasing. Alright, so this geometric prediction, I have it pretty much set up, you select which one of these comes next. Oh, this is actually difficult. It could be both of these. I think it's... No, it was that one. So I need to improve this a little bit, I think, too, in that some of these are too dim 
and they're kind of just like points. And also this goes on forever, when it should have around, I think probably 10 or so stages. Hold on though, I'm gonna go get some water, and then we'll do this. Hold on, I'll be right back.
So this is a basic iterative fractal. It generates some random steps that includes translation, mirroring, and rotation. And then right now I'm displaying it as circles, which you can see right here. But I'm thinking I'm going to make this actually a box distance function to display it because it'll give it more surface area where it's white. I'm just <laughs> I'm just thinking about the uh, what the box distance function is. It's very similar to this. Max absolute value. And I think minus the uh, whatever height or width we want. I want it to be a bit higher. And then we calculate the length for that. I think that should do it. Hmm. Oh, I didn't build it. <laughs> that would explain why it didn't change. Okay, interesting. It looks different now. That's good. Yeah, I think that looks better. So I'm just looking here, seeing how I count each answer. I think I use this count. Yeah, plus plus count bigger than 10. OK. I'm just going to do the same thing here. Create a variable called count. Initialize it to 0 on load. 
and then when it generates a new one, we check if the count bigger. If so, we end game and we don't generate another one. I can't remember, am I submitting score here? I gotta check if I submit score here. It might give me no score at the end. Average to it. I actually don't think I'm measuring score here. If answer correct, answer equals I, answer time equals this. Yeah, I, I'm not even checking if the answer is correct. That's okay. We're just going to check if this works at the beginning. I'm going to set it to just a count of five so that uh, I can do this pretty quickly. All right, so I guess with this, hmm, I guess I need to calculate how different the fractal parameters are from one to the other. Ah, I actually, I need to fix this up a little bit. Um, so I just realized I'm completely randomly generating the fractal parameters. What am I doing here? Generating the four guesses bigger than FS. Okay, yeah, so I'm changing these to actually be different parameters. I think that's good enough. I'll just compare the differences then. I thought I thought I was randomly generating these independent of what you're uh of the fractal you're using. And the issue with generating them independently is you would mean you could actually get an an incorrect answer that's actually very close to your correct answer, even though it would be rare. So what this does is it applies an offset that then... Um, I'm actually just looking, what are these PS and MP values? Mirror probability and this scale. Yeah, so the issue actually might be with this is that you get, you still might get incorrect answers that are very close to your correct answers, even though it would be rare. 
So what I'm thinking of doing is having a minimum change amount. So you can guarantee that these are going to be really different than these. Otherwise, you're kind of relying on RNG of these being so different. I guess I'll add the scoring and then I'll do it. In the three examples. Okay, I I forgot how my own code worked. T is the time along the fractal, or the multiplier of the fractal iterations. Um, so all of the guesses have T at one. You have to guess what the last iteration is. Um, when i is a zero, that is, oh, okay. So I was going to say when i is zero, then guess number zero is the answer, but then we actually, we actually put, put it randomly inside the array here. So correct is under our variable correct. So what we need to do is loop through and compare the differences between these two. Data A. I guess they're under guesses. Dot, I think gen. And gen. Now we loop through these and add up the difference. Hmm. Yeah, I think I can get away with just adding this up and then scaling it back by a value. But there's these binary values I need to calculate the difference of, so I need to decide how much they need to be weighted. Like, do I weight the angle more than the translation?
I'm going to need distance between angle for this angle. I don't think I have this included. No, I don't. But I do have a function for doing that. Angle delta. I actually don't think I need a 2D here now that I look at this. It's angle, it is just a single 2D value. I'll weight these as one, whatever. So now we need to change the score into difference. Tenacious W. I'm uh, making a little, I don't know exactly what to call it. I call it click trials. It's a bunch of little, um, it's just a bunch of little tests to test and improve skills. Uh, stuff like memory, reaction timing, color perception, aiming, proportion estimation. Right now I'm working on this one I call geometric prediction, which is where you predict what comes next in a fractal. And right now I'm just calculating how it scores what you select. Will you be making it public? Yep. When it gets to a stage that I feel like it can be public. I feel I was saying at the beginning of this, I feel like I need to fill up this bottom row. So there's like if there's twelve trials here, I feel like that would be good enough for initial release. Okay, so what would be the max difference here? Data dot length times maximum angle difference is pi, 3.14. 2 plus pi plus 2. It's like. Okay, I can just. I'll just divide by that. Divide by that times. Number of entries. And so that'll give us a normalized score where score goes 0 to 1. 
and then I can multiply that by a hundred to get my score as a percentage. And now we can count the score. I feel like this isn't going to be a good way of um, measuring score. I feel, yeah. I feel like this is going to give you really high scores even when you get it wrong. Because I might need to compare this to the. This is expecting like absolute worst case difference, but the fact is you'll normally have way less differences than that, so it might give you a way better score. I make stuff for Twitch myself in PHP and Vanilla JS. Nice. Yeah, this is Vanilla JS too. This is a cool one. Okay, that's weird. Did it throw an error? Yeah, X is not defined. You ever do freelance work? I used to. I don't anymore. I found it was pretty bad. I found it was pretty sketchy. Like, so ironically, what I found is that the sites like Freelancer and stuff were full of basically like I don't know what you'd call it, like, basically people who just want to try to squeeze you for every dollar you have and don't care if they scam you, or whatever. And then forums, which seem way sketchier for freelance work, actually seem to have way more genuine people who are willing to actually, like, build relationships and do work over time. Okay, all right, 72% means that it did not measure this correctly. The difference should be zero if I corrected the, selected the correct answer. Um, So let me do console.log difference. What could it be here? Maybe the angle delta. Let me try taking away the angle delta. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm adding a difference value if the mirror is equal. That's what it is. The mirroring is being calculated wrong. Nice, and that kind of looks like a Serpinski's triangle. I have a popular site, but I'm the only developer, so I'm looking for extra hands. Nice. I'm thinking it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely need to make this harder. This is good, though. It works. So yeah, 74%, that was actually pretty similar. So this is what I'm talking about though, even when you get it wrong, it still gives you like 81% score. Or 70%, I need to do some normalization or something. It was nice, I like the score effect. Nice, because it's not necessarily supposed to look good. It's kind of just supposed to work, do its purpose. <laughs> it's got like no text shadowing or any sort of styling, and it's just like flat gray boxes around uh, all the things. All right, so when I go through and do the generation, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to calculate the minimum, the maximum difference of um, between the answer and these generated ones. And so what this is going to do is this is going to give me my like 
normalization scale so that the score can actually be between. This means that when you select the worst guess, it'll actually give you 0% score, which I think is, is how it should work. It shouldn't give you 75% score, even when you get it completely wrong. I guess I have to do this in stages, though. Here you go. I guess I'll do it right here. I can do it here, I just need to, uh, hmm, this is complicated, because I'm now thinking, like, what if I just put this comparison um, here in a different function, so that, yeah, yeah, this is the way to do it, step, or fractal difference, so this will go through two different fractals find by dat a and dat b and then it'll go through and add up the difference so that way I don't need to write this code multiple times you can use the same code here and here Call it fractal difference Here we can do I guess FS is the correct one. So then we do oh wait, we don't even need to set this anything. We can do max guess difference equals max. There we go. So now we measure the max difference while we do this. And then when we get the difference, that's our normalization value. I guess I could just divide it here. Not a number, percent, okay, oops. Max guess difference is not a number. Oh no, oh no. That's not good. Not a number is not good. I wonder if it's coming from the fractal difference function. Wait, C dot angle. Oh my god, this isn't rotating. This isn't changing the rotation at all. There's still there's still stuff I got to do. Oh, it's not a number because I'm not setting it to 0 at the beginning. So, this should look way different when I change the rotation. 0.5%. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
There we go. Hope if I could, my stuff is more basic. Math is not my strong point. That's okay. Damn, zero <laughs> percent. Oh, 2.4 percent. Okay, the scoring is way more harsh now. Yeah, this is actually good. Okay. So now this angle we can actually add to So yeah, I actually think there's a reason I did that, where the fractal step is the same for, or the angle is the same for all the fractal steps, but I want to try to get it to work. Click where you have to use brain unacceptable. No, you can do, um, actually you're right, all of these you have to actually use your brain. You'll just get, you'll get really bad scores if you don't use your brain. Okay, this is crazy. They look different now. Which is kind of what I'm going for. This kind of looks like wood. It's kind of interesting. I've been, I was trying to press incorrect ones. I'm trying to get a gauge for what like the incorrect scoring is like. It's pretty harsh now. I feel like maybe I should increase it now a little bit. 9.3% is really harsh. Let's try and increase the rotation. So I wonder if it's because I have it set to rotate backwards. Oh my god. These are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, this is good. This is good. So streamers on Twitch play chess in mode like Kinchiski and be win when every move is random. Tells everybody about mobile games. What what chess mode is that? Like blind chess or what? Yeah, so when I do get score it's like 7.7%. So I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply pow to the score right here so that high or lower values are actually higher 100% will still be 100% but this way the 7% will hopefully be like 50% now 74% 43% yeah probably better now Some mode streamers play it this way 99% of the time to interact with chat plus some random move. It's a stupid joke. Yeah, I don't think I got it. I think this is actually pretty good. Statistically, it doesn't actually give you that many that are similar. And when I 
actually try, I think I can get most of them right. I almost might need to make that harder. Yeah, pretty simple and understandable. So I think what I need to do is I need to make more of these similar because it's pretty obvious which ones are uh, part of the pattern. I mean, it's actually it's actually still pretty difficult, I guess. I feel like I'm probably we're probably better at this dealing with shaders. I've seen tons of shaders looking like this. See here, which one is it? Is it this one or this one? I think it's this one because it has the horizontal thing. A hundred percent accurate. Okay, so this is good. We've got we've got this done. Well, not done. Done. It works. We've got this working, and it's pretty much complete in the sense that it does its purpose. We just need a uh, better, not scoring, but more difficulty. What I need to do, I believe, is when I randomly generate these, I lower the difference between them this so this should make a bunch of them sim oh my god they're all very huh oh because this is randomly generating angle oh wait okay so never mind i need to do c dot angle plus huh So these are actually still very different. I guess this, I, I shouldn't be surprised by this. Small changes in fractals result in massive changes. So this is crazy. This is, um, oh wait, I'm not multiplying angle by this. Never mind. Oh wait. So this is with how much difference? This is with like point zero zero dis difference. Point zero zero one. And they're still so different. Like, this is crazy. Okay, it's because of the mirroring. That's cool, that's like an eyeball fractal. All right, here we go. So now we can see there's barely any difference. What if we ramp this up? Okay, so the mirrors actually cause a good amount of switching. So I think in the difference here, I should give more weight to the mirrors 
because the mirrors actually switch up a whole bunch. See, it's really complicated because whether or not the mirrors actually change a whole bunch about the pattern is dependent on how much translation and rotation has happened before the mirroring. These ones are harder. This is definitely more difficult now. I guess I can I could hide my camera to show this off. Like which ones of these is it? Because these are so similar. See this is the difficult thing is when I get them really close, I'm actually gonna need to calculate a minimum difference I think here I think here because we'll end up getting ones that are basically the same. See, these aren't the same. If you look, there's actually little differences. It's like they're not exactly the same, but I need to set a minimum difference so that there at least is a little bit of difference. Oh, I guessed it. <laughs> I guessed it. These look like rocket ships. Which one do I do? I think this one. No, I was close. Now it's difficult. Now this is really difficult. This is good. It's too difficult, but that's that's good. When I was talking about it being too easy, too difficult is all right, because now we can find the middle ground. Oh my God, all right, my, my voice is already getting like hoarse again. Hold on, I'm gonna go get more water.
All right, I was also thinking about doing a pr text prediction version of this. And I was thinking about how it would work. Um, I'm thinking a sort of like Markov chain. See, but then, yeah, I'm thinking what two more I want to do here. I've actually got ideas for it. I want to do a depth estimation as well. So like you can est like basically estimating how many meters or feet or whatever away an object is. I think that one will actually be pretty complicated because I'll want to I want to give an option for people to select whether or not they want to select their distance in like metric or imperial. Because <laughs> I mean, certain people will estimate depth in yards, and certain people will estimate it in meters. So. The text prediction, though, I feel like will be like just like the geometric prediction. Except instead of a fractal, I think we're going to do like a Markov chain. Alright, so let's... Uh... So we're going to change this probability scale based off which, how far into it we are. So I guess, um, what does the counter go up to? 10? So I guess 1 minus count divided by 10, or... 1.2, whatever we want the max. The max difference to be, I think 0.1 should be the max difference. So let's try this. At the beginning, it'll start out nearly completely different. Yeah, and now these are too dark. So this is my other issue is I almost want to try to find a way to only select fractals that have coloring. It's very, very complicated. Like I can always increase the size of this cube or whatever it is. range from oh yeah okay so I scale the coordinates by 10 I think this is good I guess they could be a little bit thinner So do I, so this is inverse square. Attenuation, I might want to do something else. I guess making it brighter like this can help. Is that too bright now? I feel like that might not be too bright. I guess if I make these brighter like this, I can make it uh, thinner.
Yeah, this is actually pretty good. A bunch of these are similar now. And make you really question which one is right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think these might almost be too similar. But at the same time, you might be able to get really good at this. So that's why I feel like I should still keep it difficult. See, yeah, now this doesn't open up enough. You can't really see the pattern there. I might change the pattern progression or the pattern preview. So we'll do 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0 0.9. And this would do 0 0.5, 0 0.65, 0 0.8. I guess maybe I could reduce the number of steps and make it simpler. Yeah, now this isn't interesting enough. So I wonder about doing less of these steps. So I think this is going to make the position go out of control and create a bunch of fractals that don't have a, that are like completely blank. But hopefully they'll be interesting. Yeah, pretty much all circles. So what is it with this? Is it because I'm doing yeah, I'm doing negative position here. So these end up averaging out to either be basically nothing. Okay, yeah. So I had the right idea before. So if anything, I might want to increase the scale here. of the angle. Maybe it's the same for the angle. I'm going to 
gonna try to take away the attenuation or most of the attenuation and instead just do um I'll have to describe it. Like sharper object, yeah, like this. So I feel like this will be easier to see. I just need, I need to make them bigger. So this is the issue, is that fractals that go out of bounds, I need to find a way to make them all display in bounds. So maybe the angle is... One of the tricks there. Yeah, so I think what I'm just going to focus on is just displaying fractals that actually appear every time, if that is possible. I think it is. Me, I think I might just need to clamp rotation within a certain range. So it seems like all of these are generating shapes, which is good. Now let's make it a bit thicker. Um, and then to the angle. Okay, this might be good. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That is looking pretty good. Um, I might need to make them more different near the end. I almost feel like making them bigger, but they kind of are going to the border still. I've also noticed all of them kind of go to the bottom right corner, but none of them go to the upper left corner. And I wonder if that's like bias with the uh, the movement right here. Yeah, I think all of them are kind of like in the bottom right corner. Let's 
it's it's seeming pretty good. I'm gonna try getting the uh, both ways translation working. I guess maybe having it biased in one direction but still travel the other direction could work too. So let's try a bit of bias, a little bit negative, but also capable of both negative and positive. So is there a point where this doesn't work anymore and it's too biased in the one direction? start seeing it starts moving towards the middle. So it ends up making them smaller. So I wonder if we can fix this by scaling. Ah, uh, yeah. OK. It scales it to the point that it's invisible. sure how much I want of this negative movement or if I guess I could could just do without it yeah I think all of these shapes are capable without the movement so Whatever. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to change with the random amount here. I think I might decrease the mirror change probability. I'll try it without any mirror change probability first, actually. So let's see what this looks like on the last few when there's 0 per 0.1 difference. Are they pretty much equal? They are pretty much equal. So these are too close, but I feel like they wouldn't be so bad. If 
there was actually yeah more difference between them here. So let's see, these are opening up in this version. I guess this one's kind of opening up. Oh, it was that one. I feel like this might be a good difficulty point. I'm gonna have the mirror probability. Yeah, I, I think I have a good idea about how I wanna do difficulty scaling for this one. Mirroring is gonna happen at the beginning for the first few. So one minus C num times two. So the first half are actually gonna have random mirroring and then the next half are gonna have no random mirroring. It's gonna start out with one probability or one scaling difference and I think it'll go down to 0.2 should be good see now this one is invisible that's that's not good but I guess that that's the way it is I wonder if that's from the angle Yeah, so the beginning ones are almost way too easy. I feel like mirror difference actually isn't good because it changes the fractal so much. I think I'm gonna keep mirroring the same. Let's just try keeping mirroring the same. So they actually do get more and more similar, which I think is good. No! Oh, that was, that was close. This is actually a really fun puzzle. So like, the trick is to look at where these pieces actually move. So like these pieces right here are opening up. And these pieces down here are kind of shifting backwards and away from each other. So I feel like this is the one because you can see these get more compressed inward and these open up. But at the same time, it could be this one. No, actually that looks different. Oh, I got it. I got it. <sighs> It's this one. Um, could be. Hmm. I'm also wondering about opening them up more. I could give more of a snapshot. that's like closer to uh, the actual ones. Yeah, now this is too close to the actual answer. Too close to the actual answer. So one two five will mean point six two five and then point seven five. Wait. Yeah, and then point one five means 
we'll sample at 0.65 and then 0.8. I guess, yeah, that 0.8 sampling I think is good. See, I'm conflicted because when you have these small lines, it is easier to tell what's happening between the first and second stages. But at the same time, you get ones that are like almost not visible because the lines are cut off. I do feel like that's this is better because it's sharper. These begin opening up. Ooh, close. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with this. It maybe could be a bit easier. I could do a bit more difference here. I think I should probably increase the max difference is actually what I'm going to do. Start this off at 2. And maybe we'll go back to 0 0.3 instead. Now this might be too easy. Really what a lot of this is, is pattern identification. But I guess it's a good puzzle just generally. I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's a really nice difficulty scaling now. And some of these actually are nearly impossible because they're so similar, but that's okay. That is okay. So I might, I'm going to do math pow. So these get harder much quicker. And then what's 0.3 pow to 0.9 okay so I want this to be a 0.25 is good so we'll have that go down to 0.5 and then being passed through POW2 it'll end up being 0.25 
Nice. So I'm able to get basically all of them now. I feel like that might be a bit easy now. But at the same time, I'm like, I might just be good at it. Yeah, now that gets that gets decently harder at a nice pace. Okay, I'm happy with that. There we go. And is everything done there? I think I just need to do um this this message at the end prediction accuracy i think i don't do that though like i think maybe for aiming let me see do i do aiming accuracy i think there's a few of these i don't actually output anything at the end which is fine just do score so I think that that's what I'll do for the geometric prediction I don't need to put out any of this accuracy of so what do I do in the aiming do I just don't put nothing yeah timeout end game no I guess I guess I can just call end game. What did I just do? Oh, I just opened aiming again. All right, it's good. I think I'm going to do a text prediction next because that's what I was thinking about. Put this enclosure and then I will copy this and paste it and rename it text prediction and we'll replace it to be a text prediction so I think it's it's gonna be very similar to the geo geometric prediction it's gonna show a sequence of text and it's gonna ask you which which letter comes next Also, I'm thinking there's some little polishing things I can do with this. Like, um, put a little underline here on whatever letter you're selecting next. So that it's not sitting here on a blank screen. Like, you don't really know what to do. I think if I did a blinking underscore here, it would kind of highlight that you're supposed to input. And I'm thinking doing the same thing with the text prediction. So I think I might be able to do that simply by going to where I draw the text here for your input and then adding an underscore at the end every second, every other second. So let's look at where it renders that text. Target string, input string, here we go. So when it's targeting, 
when it's not targeting we input the input string and then I think I think I have a value called time and this is set to date dot now yes perfect so what we can do here is we can just do some very simple if time modulo one bigger than 0 0.5 then insert an underscore very easy but should be very effective yes okay okay so the issue is it keeps uh wait i think i just found a bug when i click that really fast it like skips forward interesting wait what's happening there huh So that's really interesting. I can like speed through the next guide screen, but you shouldn't be able to do that. You're not supposed to be able to interrupt. Uh, you're supposed to be able to skip that, but not skip this. See right there, you're not supposed to be able to skip that. Okay, so I have a bug. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to speed through that. So I gotta figure out where that is. And I also need to, uh... Make this not flash when it's input. So where do I do the skipping? In the press here. Let me see, I think this is the skipping. Yeah, now you can't speed through it. Okay, so what am I checking? If input string dot length bigger than equal to target string, then t step equals three. And when t step equals three, I go to the next stage. So why am I able to trigger this while it's entering? Not targeting. And input string for smaller than target string dot length. So. Hmm. If not targeting. Ah. So if it's targeting, actually, this should work. and not targeting. Maybe. If not targeting, an input string is smaller than target string. If it's a string, bring target string dot length and not targeting. I think that'll work.
Yep, it fixed it. Yep, you can't skip through it anymore. Perfect. All right, let's add that uh, that underscore. should do the flashing when we want to input take it away when we don't input perfect that looks very nice now now it gives you a sign that it's waiting for you to input <clears throat> and there's no bug where you can skip through yay oh my god I don't know what it is my voice is like it is fucked today, dude. Like, it's actually getting hurt to talk point. Which is so weird, because I'm, I'm usually able to actually talk for, like, a few hours at least. I'm gonna go get more water. Be right back. I'm pretty happy to get this geometric prediction done. Because, um... I was fiddling with this for a while, probably longer than I should have. I really like fractals. <laughs> I really like fractals. Hopefully other people like fractals too. I wish there was a way I could just easily share this with the stream. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. I'm saying I wish there was an easy way for me to share this with the stream. I could upload this HTML file right now if I wasn't so goddamn lazy.
All right. What kind of text? What kind of text pattern do we do? I'm thinking Markov chain. Normalized weight matrix of input characters. So it produces a different or somewhat different pattern each time. Or a non-repeating pattern, I mean. Hmm. And I think like the memory I'm gonna generate a dictionary. I'm just thinking, do I use float32 array or anything here? I think I just use array. I don't think I use typed arrays anywhere, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna use regular array. I'm gonna try this random to begin. I think I might need to normalize these to make it actually a unique pattern, but or non-repeating, but we'll see. I guess there's nothing about normalizing it that says it can't be repeating. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, let's see what this generates. I'm just gonna comment out a bunch of the old code that doesn't really work from a geometric prediction. Hello, I am Ben. I'm making uh, this thing, it's like human benchmark. Test out a bunch of skills that you can like measure on a computer. Trying to do stuff that isn't really included in a bunch of other trials, like this proportion estimation. Estimate how much of the pie. Estimate how long uh, the stick is. Estimate how big the block is. Some of them are deceiving. Apparently I'm not very good at proportion estimation. But, uh, yeah. Pretty simple. I honestly feel like, like, some of my color perception is so bad. Well, for example, it's for like this. I didn't even know my color perception is bad until I tried to do this. Is it for practice? Yeah. It's like a trial. It's designed to give you like a, a mark. See if you can do something. Like find which blue is this blue among all the other blue. It's actually funny, it looks like it's easier to see what blue is what on my second monitor. I wonder if it actually has better, like, color precision. I guess I just suck. Game you're playing, are you making- no, I'm making it. Here's the code. This is the last one I just did called Geometric Prediction. You predict... My camera's kind of blocking it. You predict which one of these is the next in the sequence. Honestly, you have to kind of take your time and look at them. Not just like rush through it like I'm trying to do, which I think is actually good. If it's so easy you can just rush through it and do it without thinking of it, it's not really a trial. And then, um, yeah. And it basically collects all your stats. So then you've got all your stats for the different uh, tests. And you can like click on them and it gives you the graph. I actually should do, I did this graph pretty quickly. This is something I should make look better. I could do some better centering on these. I'm kind of doing all these base games first and then I'm going to go through and make these buttons and the CSS and stuff look better. But first I want, I said I want, I want like 12 trials to do, I think that's a decent number. Reminds me of the minigames in the Luminosity app on mobile, sharp as the mind. Luminosity, one of those uh, like brain power apps, like for like improving your brain. That's kind of the idea of what I was going for.
So this is now trying to randomly generate a text pattern. Okay, 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 okay. That is not a good text pattern. So we're trying to generate a text pattern that isn't repeating. That is not repeating, which might actually be a very complicated task. G G G G G G G G G. Little brain exercise, but dressed up as games. Yeah. I mean, in this case though, it's not really dressed up as games. It's kind of upfront about the fact that you're supposed to test yourself. So, did this just break? Guesses is not defined. Oh. Add a randomizer to each individual letter slot. Yeah, it's a, it's a pattern though, so you can't be random, because you need to be able to predict it. <laughs> so, technically if I try this over and over, it should have some different changes. Eventually it should do different things, but it's rare, so let's, uh, let's think about what's happening here. We're randomly generating a weight. For each letter. And then when we're looking at calculating the output, oh, I'm not feeding in the last of. I'm not setting the last character. Of course it's not changing every time. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So now it's now it's it's not really changing every time, but Oh god, what's happening? I just crashed my browser. Is this while loop infinite? Oh, I'm not resetting the dictionary. Ah. I am not resetting the dictionary. Eight nine eight nine eight nine eight nine. Okay. So 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 so. Da. All right. So. How am I going to get these to change each time? I could actually... Okay, this is what I'm thinking. Programming this Markov chain to actually repeat. Hmm. Or... I'm thinking of doing something that's not a Markov chain. I'm thinking maybe randomly generating repeating sections of text. And then I can actually programmatically control the size of the chunks that are repeating, or how big the patterns are, because basically what I'm thinking is as small patterns, like two letters repeating, it's fairly obvious that the next letter here is going to be W. Um, so, obviously need bigger patterns than that. And the other thing is, is the Markov chain, I can't can't really guarantee it's actually going to be the pattern. So I'm thinking, yeah, literally just randomly generating a sequence, sort of.
I'm just thinking, how would I program that? It's basically gonna be an array of like two characters that then feeds into another array, except instead of two characters, it's like a set of two characters. Grab a set of like five to eight digits, so let's apply a randomizer to it, and then repeat it. So like five to eight digits, so let's apply a randomizer, then repeat it. Yeah, but then the issue is, is that if it's just repeating, like if people can realize that it just repeats, like right after, like right here, like the maximum length of the set is two, so you pretty much know that it's going to repeat in twos. So even if you repeat a set of like five, it'll be pretty easy to notice that it repeats after five. So you need to do like hier hierarchical or like recursive patterns where it's like, it would do like OY and then it might do a different two letter thing. And then that, you can think of those two two-letter things as actually a four-letter sequence that then might feed into another two-letter thing or four-letter sequence. Or, here's what I'm thinking, the Markov chains, uh, they manage to make patterns out of things that aren't patterns. So I'm thinking I can train the Markov chain on a random sequence and it'll generate its own, um, its own sequence, or pattern. So, I think I'm gonna try that. To do that, I'm just gonna randomly initialize the Markov chain. randomly generate some text or actually we don't even hmm the question is how much do I train the network pattern pattern plus equals to set the base pattern length. I guess I'll just do something small to begin, like five. And we basically, we generate a random sequence. And this isn't actually our, this isn't really the pattern, or at least not what's shown in the game. This is instead the pattern that's used to train the pattern network. So we get this random pattern that actually doesn't have a pattern, but it repeating itself will cause a pattern. And the Markov chain won't be able to do this completely, which should create its own little pattern trying to repeat this. So now the slow part is we need to run over this like a thousand times training the network. So that's the slow part. Uh, becomes the next character. Alright, 
I just started learning to code last year. Bought a C sharp reference guide and the C sharp 9.1 in a nutshell book. Thinking I could pick this up fast, but understanding a lot of these things require you to practice doing it. Even though I have these books and I'm constantly reading, I've come to the conclusion that I don't know what's going on half the time. Yeah. Yeah, programming is really complicated. Um, the way I put it the other day is like you could put a monkey in front of a typewriter to write code, and the uh, there's like just just in like two lines of code. Each line of code can almost be thought of as like a even it's even larger than like a 32-bit integer. A 32-bit integer has like four billion combinations. Basically, just with two or three lines of code or one line of code. You've got about four to ten billion combinations of things you can do. And about 99.99% .99 of those will cause compiler errors and not even work or do anything. Like, you can put a monkey in front of a typewriter, and it likely won't write code that actually compiles for, like, years. It's, uh, it's very complicated. Oh yeah, the other analogy I give is, uh, the universe is really goddamn big. There's molecules smashing each other and doing reactions everywhere. Despite how big the universe is, the odds of you getting molecules in the right configuration that they reproduce their chemical system, like life, the odds of creating life are so insanely small. The odds of you making a computer program that actually runs and reproduces so goddamn low. So low. Like, it is really challenging. Hmm. So for this, I think I'm gonna need to loop through... ...all of these. I'm not sure though, I'm thinking about it. So we'll loop through the outputs. Odd thought, but I get what you mean. I heard people say that the way you get good at programming is pretending to be good at it. Well, I mean, you don't need to make, you don't need to be good at programming to make money at, at it. Like that's the other thing. You can just like tell people you know how to program. And even if you give them a program that is garbage in terms of code quality, if someone's asking you to do code, they're likely not a software developer. Like, what I'm saying is, is that you can be a freelance developer, provide absolute garbage software to businesses that pay you, and the businesses won't have a fucking clue, because they're not software developers. The other software developers that can criticize that code and program are too busy doing their own shit. So what you end up with is basically, like, Shit doesn't even need to work. Like, you can get paid to make a website for someone, you'll still get paid, and they just won't hire you again, but they'll still pay you. Like, that is... legitimately happens a lot. It's kind of fucked. Like, I would love to be like, oh man, the software development industry is full of integrity, and like, develop software developers are completely honest people, that want to provide the absolute best quality. I, w I, w I would love to be able to say that. <laughs> would love to be able to say that. It's not true though. My favorite bit, those companies will still make tons of money in spite of terrible code. That is my other thing, is like... <sighs> yeah. Doesn't mean there's not pain involved. Yeah, no. So that's the thing to say, though. Is like, you could put a monkey in front of a typewriter and they still wouldn't generate that terrible code. Like, even writing terrible code for those companies is still difficult and painful. So it's like, it's kind of understandable why programming, like, 
you get shit like that when it's something so difficult like programming. But it's like, yeah. Okay, actually, I feel like a good analogy is a plumber I was talking to the other day was like, yeah, if I could spend all day, or like, if I had the time, he would spend like the whole time just like redesigning people's plumbing systems and going like, oh man, this is fucked up because of a whole other issue with your plumbing down the line. And if you want, like, if he had the time, he would love to go through and redo all this plumbing, design an actual system. Programming is very much like that, where a bunch of programmers would love to spend the time going and designing an awesome system, but instead they're pushed by a company to go and get the very, like, go and get the issue fixed as fast as possible, even if it means just putting, like, warning tape over the issue and not even fixing the actual issue. So we, we need to calculate now what the difference is though. This, and this is a single, this is a single depth Markov chain. I'm probably gonna wanna do a two or three depth. I'll need to actually program that in though. So I'm gonna do this first. I say that all the time, I'm just a plumber that whispers to electricity. This is the whole, why do I need a degree question comes up. I'm a certified mechanical drafter, even though it was for mechanical, I got hired making blueprints for a company that installed sprinkler systems for buildings. Holy crap, I can relate to that. Interesting. Someone I know basically had their whole apartment building ruined because a sprinkler system leaked in the bottom, like basically in the parking garage section. A sprinkler system ran between like the bottom floor and the parking garage. And apparently there's like giant steel pillars and concrete uh, in between the parking garage and the, the main floor to like support the apartment building, and apparently for like a year there was just like a leak in like a sprinkler system or something, just filling up that middle layer with water, and it just collapsed in the bottom. So basically they didn't know there was a giant leak in this building for like, I don't know how long it was running, like months? Until all of a sudden a whole part of it caved in, and like, and then of course as soon as it caves in they have inspectors come in and they're like oh this building isn't safe everyone needs to get out and it's just like are you fucking telling me that no one in the apartment management or in like none of the workers at the apartment building knew this shit was happening like someone fucking knew someone knew Example, there's a bunch of building coats, know where they install. A lot of those bozos just ignore the code so they can finish the blueprints and get paid. So in the past year, my internet's been cut off twice because someone who's been doing construction around in the area has just, just cut straight through an internet line. And the best part is, the best part is like a few months ago as well, 
they had like the gas company come around and go like, so there's a gas leak in the area because someone cut through a gas line. Dude, I'm sorry, but like, holy fuck. Uh, like so many construction workers and contractors just, they do not give a fuck, dude. But like the whole issue is you're literally paying them to give a fuck. It's probably in Mexico. See, the interesting thing is I live in Canada where it's like no Mexicans. All the contractors are white Christian guys that have previous opiate issues. <laughs> like... So there's, there's this construction, like, company, I don't know what you'd call them, a contracting company that, uh, like, they basically, like, have a bunch of subcontractors under them that they pay, and the, the company is literally known for people going in and just getting injury compensation. Like... Like, people will literally go, I'm going to go and work at this business because I know they're going to give me injury compensation for this thing. Like, do you get this? People literally do, like, workers' compensation fraud. And, like, do this to get drugs. Like, it's so fucked up. But what's crazy to me is it's like, I feel like it's like, how do you prove this shit? Someone from inside the company has to go and actually be like, Oh yeah, here's when this happened and this happened. I know I sound racist, but I'm Mexican. I don't know, most of the, uh, we, we actually have, we have Jamaicans here, but really, seriously, no Mexicans, like, very little. I'm sure there are, but, uh... Like, I, I'm actually, I'm thinking not Mexicans, like, we have, um, fuck, what's it called, um, we have South Americans, but not really Mexicans, I don't know. So that, that itself isn't racist. That was stereotyping. Racism would now be if you apply that stereotyping and treat Mexicans different because you have prejudice against them. That would be racism. trying to think of what I'm trying to do here. So this is supposed to be I got to I got to kind of choose values here. I guess this is supposed to be 1. Otherwise it's supposed to be 0. Muslim friends get them best. I have white, black, few Hispanic friends. We're all kind of like that. Not in America. Everything is racist. I don't know. I would argue that racist is like, or sorry, I would argue that America and pro, like probably just generally North America is one of the least racist areas in the world. Just like, I'm not saying racism doesn't exist, but, um, in America, but like, seriously, like, if you go to a bunch of Asian countries, they will seriously treat you different based off your skin color or how tall you are. Uh, if you go to like a bunch of South 
American countries, they will treat you different based off that. So it's like, it's really funny because it's like, at a certain point, telling people to act different based off how they view other people is like telling people to not have their culture. Because like the fact is a bunch of people's culture is literally built around ostracizing and keeping the community a very strict way. So in a way, like by telling people to not be racist or not have prejudice, it's telling them to not be true to their culture. Which... <laughs> So it's a very, it's a very interesting, conflicting thing. I, I don't, I feel like there's more to this. This shouldn't, I should probably have more code to write than this, but maybe not. Maybe this is it. Let's try running this, see what this, see what this outputs. 7B, 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 and let's look at the base pattern. 300333. Zero, zero, three, three, three. Okay, this is actually really good. So the. Yes! Okay. So, oh my god, this is really good. So the Markov chain is actually getting a random pattern. YU, 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 UIE. Yes, yeah, so it's three letter patterns sometimes now. UIE, UIE. Oh wait, IE, IE. So what do you think comes next, U or IE? I bet I bet it's another E, because it's IE, IE, IE. <laughs> All right, so now let's let's ramp this up to a thousand. Two J, two J, two J. What was our base pattern? One, two, two, one. I, 1FC, 1FC, 1F. So C is probably the next one there. Yeah. This is actually looking good now. It's pretty much doing repeating patterns up to like 6. Or sorry, up to uh... So far I've seen maximum 3 in terms of patterns, but um... Lowering the learning rate. So what I'm looking at here is I'm just trying to get a, a measurement of what the patterns it's generating is like. These uh, two repeating letters is alright, but I'm looking for like three or four repeating sequences. Some more advanced. I think I'm gonna need- oh, look at that, a four letter. 6HMN, 6HMN. So yeah, I think uh, that's good. I'm gonna expand the depth. Oh wait, I think it's worse now with a hundred. Maybe not. I think I got my thoughts mixed up. I guess what I'm getting at is everyone gets easily offended and consider everything to be offensive. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I stopped caring about, um... I feel like, uh... How do I put this? Like... At a certain point, there's people that will get offended at you wearing like specific hair or like like at a certain point you can't not offend people like there's people where they're it's their fault they're getting offended so at a certain point I just look at it as like what is the long term best uh, <laughs> best thing what is the long term least offensive sometimes the least offensive thing is to actually be offensive very quickly and for a short time and then that's it there's no more offensivity instead of this like long-term offensive shots at each other
Humans are too fucking complicated, dude. Try doing input letters now. Is this gonna work? Is it gonna throw errors? Guesses is not defined. There we go. So then inside of here, do, actually, <laughs> I'm just going to copy the text from this. I'm just thinking though, I might want to, uh, oh, I think I have the color of these matching this. I wonder if I want to just keep the style like this for now. I think I will. It's easier that way. So then this is checking if one thing is being targeted or not. Take that away for now. There we go. Okay, so now we can predict the next one. 9, I, 8, 9, I, 8, 9, I, 9. So I think it'll be 9. Actually, I actually need to program this now. God damn it. No matter who you are, what you do, who you know, you need to do a deed, whether good or bad, someone somewhere is always going to have something to say about people have forgotten that you're not going to be able to please everyone all the time. I'll watch you code now. Don't mean to keep distracting. No, it's okay. It's, uh, I might, uh, be finishing the stream soon. Anyways, for now, I wasn't going to do a ton of work on this. More just trying to get back into it. This is my first, uh, JavaScript programming stream for, like, a month or so. So I'm kind of getting back into it. It's kind of hard jumping from one language to the other. I was doing a bunch of C-sharp, and I keep writing, like, instead of far I, I keep writing int I. The nice thing is, though, I can just copy a bunch of this code on detecting which one you're pressing, and just reuse that. So then this will detect what I've clicked. Also, there's a bunch of construction going on like right outside my window now and I'm hoping if I go and have lunch for like an hour I'll come back and I'll be gone but probably not probably won't be like that displaying this I need to display which one you've just clicked I don't know where I did that though oh right here last click
for a reset, I will click. I do, okay. When do you usually stream? Around now, I usually do a stream in the morning for like two hours or so. And then I stream at night usually. iPad, I can't see anything on here besides the chat and stream windows. Really? MX is not defined. stream regularly actually if that's what you're asking <laughs> there we go okay, so now we can at least click to select the letters that's nice What I'm doing here is I'm generating the whole text and then I'm going to actually take correct off of the back of the text array like this. This is the only way to get care code at. I can do seven because I know how long it's going to be. And then we remove that from the end of text. So there we go. C3, D3, D3, D3. God damn it. Okay. I just realized an easier way to do this is if i equals 7 correct equals mi there we go so hmm the other interesting question is how would i calculate like let's say you choose let's say you choose b when the next one, oh wait, the next one will be B. Never mind. Okay, let's say you choose K. When the next one is B, I don't think it should give you zero percent score. Maybe how would I do? So I'm thinking, what is it called? Ha hamming distance? When you calculate the distance between characters in a string? Well, I think I'll go through the string and find the nearest case of K. Huh. But that might allow you to actually just get score. I might actually do it where the only way you get 100% score is when you select the, the best one. All right, I'm gonna go. Well, I'm gonna have lunch. I have a problem stopping my stream. I just kinda, I keep going for very long periods of time and then forget to stop it. What I mean is, I get really caught up in programming that stuff for like hours and then I forget to eat food and stuff. Alright. I'm gonna go. Uh, I might be back in an hour or two. I might be back tonight. I don't know. I will be back tomorrow though. Tomorrow morning for another stream like 9am EST. 
I'll uh, I'll see you around. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me program this in JavaScript. I'll be doing a lot more JavaScript. Um, I have a game engine I'm working on in JavaScript, so that might be interesting to some people. Bye bye. I hope everyone's doing well. I'll see you around.